You're rude, you're mischievous, you're incorrigible. But more than that, you're gonna learn respect for your elders. Think again, older man. I got a bad feeling about this. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Review. Today, let's take a look at the Plunderlings Fush and Tough, Cursed Fury, and Captain Ash, Zombone, and Gobbler, and their corresponding hatchlings. Maybe an accessory pack or two. I may have went a little overboard with Plunderlings. But if you watch the weekly at all, you know I have been in on this Kickstarter since the beginning, since they announced it, since they showed concept art for it. There was just something cute and absolutely mesmerizing about it. And it was one hell of a Kickstarter. They just kept going and going and going and then they delivered. There may have been a little bit of wait. Hell, I've been part of a Kickstarter and I still look in awe and bow down to the Plunderlings team with how well they did this. Looking at the package, it's freaking brilliant. The window is essentially looking through the mouth of the character you bought. Each one is color coordinated to the character. On the side, it's like a crate. Notice this slot. We'll look at that here in a second. On the back, pretty promotional shots of the characters along with their names. On the other side, more crate, choking hazard. Don't put them in your mouth. On top, a window to show more of the accessories and also to light up the inside so it's easier to see from the front that's a marketing gimmick that you know if it were like that it's all dark you don't see as much and then on the bottom feet another cute little addition but let's get these open see what's going on here we're gonna cut in through the top i know we usually <laughs> open from the bottom the heads and the hands then down in the next tray you have the accessories and the figure itself and these. Most of the weapons and accessories are just in. You can see the hand kind of floating around. We'll plug it back down. There's one band holding the actual figure. Afterwards, if you want to repack this, you can put it here, push his feet down into the blister, and then it's ready to be packed back up. Now I say all that because if you want to put it back in the package and then up the cuteness factor, they put these slots on the sides. Pull out the insert, pop those slots, fold this at the foldy point off the side. Work the insert back in, close the top, and then your packaging has ears. Another throw in that they didn't have to do, but they went above and beyond, even with the packaging. Oh, and getting them out of the package, <laughs> Man, they are just too cute. While being awesome and fun, it's the just culmination of all that together that makes you go, oh, plunderlings. And even though there's a lot of shared sculpt here, even the little tweaks like to the crotch pieces or the pants or the overlays on top of the colors used for each character, it just brings out so much personality, so much differing personality for each one. Fush, Zombone, or Zomboni, hmm? and Fury all share the same crotch piece with the rope belt, the torn top of the pants. But then for the legs below that, there's some pants sculpt for Fury and Ash. But then again, notice Ash has this different belt piece with the skull and full on belt. And then Gobbler and Tuff are essentially just naked bodies. But again, they're changed up by this overlay piece on the chest and then a cape here. The vest for Ash, the robe for Fury, and then Fush has a bandolier. So yeah, the sheer brilliance of coming up with a base body that can be so many different things with just some swappable parts. Also, all the faces, at least the ones on them in the package, have that wide-eyed smile, just the fangs barely sticking out of the grin look. Boom, we'll move this around to here and this to here. Tough and Ash have earrings in their ears, while Gobbler and Fury's ears are a little bit worse for wear. They have some tears in them. But then Fush and Zombone have just plain ears, and the ears are separate pieces. And while I have that up close, the gold is very nicely painted. The eyes are black. Are the eyes black on all of them? Nope, Fury has some blue ones. The rest are all black. On top of it being gloss black, you can see the glare of my lights in them too, but even without heavy lighting, those simple little glares painted on, it just adds a little bit more depth. And then each one has their own base color, and right off the bat, looking at this, this pastel violet, it just works so well. But on each one, the knees 
and the elbows are highlighted with a contrasting color. Kind of a rose color for tough. Oh, not so much for Ash because he's wearing pants, but the black paint for that and then the gray cuffs at the bottom. On top of the vest being black and having some brown stripes on the outside. Again, just a little bitty thing that didn't have to be done, but it brings out a lot of detail. It's almost a purplish color on his elbows. For Gobbler's green color, there's a red for the knees and elbows. Just a dot. It's barely noticeable, but your mind picks up on it when you're looking at it. Fury is again wearing pants, but the white paint here, the gray paint here, and I keep forgetting the fingernails and toenails. Zombone's pale white skin gets kind of a gray, almost blackish, just a spray, just a pssh. And then Fush has a purplish color to contrast against the blue. At its base level, you can say, oh, it's just the same figure six times. But I say to you, oh, they're all different characters. Going over articulation, there is a ball joint. Well, actually, let's pop that off. There's a ball joint going down to a hinge in the neck. And with that, you can hinge way back, all the way down. Oh, guess what? So much tilt. And then, of course, swivels all the way around. Hinge and swivel at the shoulder comes up past 90. Rotates around. He's going to slap his ear. Hinge and swivel at the elbow comes up a little past 90. And then that swivels. Wrist rotates and then hinges in and out for the flat hand. Ball joint mid torso, <laughs> not bad range at all. Ball coming out to the hip goes forward. Back goes out eh, about 45. Quite a bit of swivel on that ball joint, but if you want more rotation, there's also a swivel joint below that. Double knee comes up. Oh. Bing, bing, bing. Hinge at the ankle goes back. Goes forward. Forward facing pin for some rocker. For accessories, each one comes with three head options and two hand options. Besides that grinning head that each one comes with, like I showed just a minute ago, pops off. Easy enough to just pop the other head on. And with that, you get a big old toothy grin or the big open mouth toothy grinning crazy smile. And then besides the flat hands, pull those out, pop in the weapon holding hands or grip hands that are hinged up and down. Plunderlings know what's going on. To further the differences between the characters, each one comes with individual accessories. Zombone comes with this bone mask and a bone to carry around. Gobbler comes with dual axes and a viking helmet and this shell. Ash has a big honking sword a spyglass and a hat. Tough comes with a witchy type hat, a big mallet, and then a frog, I guess for spells or something. Fury has an anchor type staff situation going on, a goblet, and then some kind of admiral's hat. And then Flush has more of a pirate thing going on with the sword, the hat, and the slingshot pistol thing. The hands are dream for accessories. You can flex them out, put something in there, and then it springs back into position fairly fast. Can hold very nicely. For the hats, you remember no holes, no nothing. There's actually a magnet in the top of that, so it just snaps on. Boop. It's not just gonna fall off from moving the figure around. And it allows for some slight movement. You can put it back a little bit, you can turn it. Ah, oh, Flash is tired. And getting them all together, so many different kinds of accessories. On top of them just, you know, handing off their weapons to the others, with the magnets, you can just pull this off. Put this over here, pop that on, throw that down. Interchangeable parts. Do whatever the hell you want with them. Maybe you want Ash to be more Viking. That pops down there. Bring that hat there. If there was one thing that bugged me, it'd be the witch's hat sits down over the eyes just a little too far. And even then, it adds attitude. What do you want? You can take this and put this, and you have kind of the the, the Foosh logo, you know? They all also include these. They have this peg on them, lift the arms, and usually in the bandolier or the belt, there's a hole that you can plug them into. It's kind of a scabbard or to hold the weapons, but, well, that's a big honking sword to be putting in there. It's just another option for holding the weapons. There is also the hatchlings. And at first I thought, why do I need these itty bitty little baby bodies? Then I realized, oh, that is brilliant. You have these extra parts from all the figures, like you're not going to use all three heads at the same time, or both sets of hands. Plug them in here, and pop the head on. It's not articulated. Well, there is the shoulders. There's a hinge and a swivel around. It's about what you would expect. But what could be considered an accessory holder becomes another character for your shelf. Fwash brings his son out on the high seas. Zombone can have a little zombie minion or something. Gobbler showing his daughter the ropes. Tough has an assistant for toil and trouble. Ash helping out a hatchling. And Fury raising a little idol of his own. Again, just a cool concept that I didn't know I needed until I saw it and realized what it was and thought, oh, you know, 
I need holders for my heads and hands. That doubles up my plunderling army. And then I also ended up with these accessory packs of steel and wood. There's a couple of these <laughs> dual wielding wrenches. I guess. A couple of smaller short swords, another long sword, another, well, that's a curved sword. Is that the same as, no, it's different. It's a different shape and size from the one I got with Fwoosh. Another Viking helmet that we got with Gobbler. Oh. But then there's also this conquistador type helmet. Is that front or back? I don't know. I can't decide. I think it goes that way. For the wood set, get a shield well <laughs> knock them all out get a shield got a handle on the back for holding big mugs because plunderlings you know you know how they roll have two more of flush's slingshot pistols have a rifle in that same style with a slingshot on the end another flush what is that a tricorn something like that and then also a bandana oh Looks great. Size-wise, the plunderlings stand at about uh, slightly under four inches tall. Compared to our usual six-inch lines like the Hasbro Star Wars Black series or Hasbro's Marvel Legends, gonna come in a little bit short, but because of the proportions, it could fit into these universes if you wanted to shove them in there. Have some fancy adventures with your DC Universe Classics classic Batman or the SH Figure Arts Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Leonardo. Maybe Fig... Why does he stand so crooked? That's weird. But maybe figments of imagination for MCU characters. I completely forgot I had the Hero Cross Metal Figuration Star Wars Boba Fett. Proportion-wise, he's bringing in that bounty. Or you can work them into whatever cartoon lines you have laying around, like the new Scoob... Well, new, fairly new Scoob movie movie figures. In fact, <laughs> so at the end of the day, I, 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 fun. <laughs> That's really all I got to say. The team behind Plunderlings did such a fantastic job of giving us all they could while utilizing as little sculpt as necessary or possible. And I say that in a good way. They can utilize everything they've done so far in so many different patterns that it gives such a variety to everybody. If you don't like this, you can swap it out with that. Take this, put it over here. There's a simplicity but so many options. One thing I did run into while playing with these, you'll notice, you probably saw it somewhere, was the paint chipping around the joints, but I was going to town on these things. And thankfully the plastic underneath is the same color. The paint on top is just to add that matte color to it. So even though I've seen paint flakes around here, I look at the figures and I, I have to really, really look to see where it may have came from. But if you can't tell, I love these things. Unfortunately, at the moment, Big Bad Toy Store is sold out of these. I don't know their future plans for getting more plunderlings out there, but they have already started moving forward on the next steps, the plunder strongs, the plunder longs. So it seems like these guys are in it for the long haul. And <laughs> given the quality and the excitement and the fun of these, I'm in, I'm, I'm, I'm ready, keep going. Give me all you want. So if you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. Going back to the comparisons, I, I said you could fudge them into, you know, your six inch display, your seven inch, because of the designs and the proportions, it'll fit in multiple scales. But not only that, you can hide these around the house, on your bookshelves, or in your kitchens, in your bathrooms. They're just fun little things for people to find. It's almost a scavenger hunt. Hey, where'd you put that fun toy? Oh, it's right there.